People often ask me, what's your favorite adaptation that you see in, in mammals? And that's a hard one. I mean, I like, I like looking at things. I like looking at beautiful things. So perhaps vision is my favorite adaptation in the, in the animal kingdom. Um, I like listening to things. Like, so perhaps it's, it's, it's hearing that's my favorite adaptation. But one of the adaptations I like to talk about a lot is, is echolocation. It's the ability that a couple groups of mammals have to sort of see their environment using their ears, right? So here's a bat. It's what we often think of when we think of an uh, animal who uses echolocation. And so these, are, these animals, are, 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 they move at night. Their eyes, they have eyes, but eyes aren't really good for, for long-range long movement. Uh, what they need to do anyway in terms of finding animals that are flying around out there. So they emit calls and then they listen for those echoes, those, those sound waves bounce off of things, uh, either obstacles or prey items. And then they're able to pick up information, pick up data from those echoes and in their mind create a, a map of what the environment looks like. And it's just fascinating to me to think about animals doing that just by making clicks and listening to the echoes of those clicks. Now with bats, um, some bats echolocate, they emit sounds through their mouths. Some bats emit sounds through their nose. That's what we have going here. And if you can see right there on the front, this is a phyllostomid bat. That is a, uh, that's a whole family of the New World leaf nose bats. And they're called leaf nose because of this little appendage on the top of their nose right there, this leaf shaped thing on top of their nose, which is where they will emit the sounds. And when they are emitting sounds, that leaf nose is, is under control of muscles and is changing shape. And what it's believed that that does is that it changes, changes the area of, the, of, of, of air that is being sampled by the bats, right? It is sufficiently insonified to send back good data to the bat that the bat can make a picture of its environment, right? And so by change in a, the analogy, a good analogy is, imagine if you've got a flashlight and you're in the middle of a big field and you're trying to see something way at the other side of the field. You'll dial your flashlight down so it's a narrow beam. That's how you see things far away, right? But imagine you're trying to catch that moth you saw at the other end of the field and you get close to the moth. You don't want a narrow beam when you're trying to grab the moth, especially if you're trying to grab the moth with your mouth, right? And the moth is trying to evade you. So when you get close to the moth, you back off your flashlight beam, you make it wider, and then you can see everything around you. You can't see far away, but you can see close to you. And so the bats are doing the same thing by changing the shape of their nose leaf. They are changing the shape of the area that they're seeing in front of them, right? Just fascinating when you think about that. So, Whales will do echolocating as well. And when whales are locating, whales are echolocating, call it biosonar, but it's basically a very similar process. They emit sounds. Here's an example. Um, this is a dense beaked whale. Okay, this is our only species of this beaked whale at the Burke Museum. There's a diversity of beaked whales. We have one of them, uh, Baird's beaked whale, hanging in our lobby. This is a dense beaked whale. Some people call it a Blainsville's beaked whale after the original describer in the early 1800s. But the neat thing about this animal, um, all beaked whales, all toothed whales actually, that includes dolphins, uh, like orcas, it includes porpoises, includes sperm whales. They are all out there sampling their environment or sensing their environment with echolocation in a similar way to bats do it. Now they're underwater, so it's a very different medium. Making sounds and receiving sounds underwater is very different than how bats do it. And in fact, the way that bats make the sounds is that the, the sound producing mechanism is up here and the sound flows through the forehead of the animal, right? And in the forehead of of dolphins and beaked whales and porpoises sits this big organ is called a melon. It's movable and it's where the sound waves travel through the melon out into the water and then they reflect off the prey item and are picked up by the whale back here. And that melon can change shape and does change shape. As the whale is emitting sounds, the melon changes shape and does the same thing to 
the shape of the area that's being sampled in front of the whale, right? In the same way that your flashlight can make a long, narrow beam to see things far away, or make it a short, wide beam to grab something that's right in front of your face, these animals will change the shape of their melon, and that changes the shape of the, the part of the water that's sufficiently insonified to send back good information. Good information meaning these, these animals can put together a picture of their environment. And then when they get close to the animals, close to their prey items, these whales don't do a lot of chomping. There's not much in the way of teeth. They do have a little tooth embedded in the mandible here. But when they get close to their squid or their fish or whatever they want to eat, they just open their mouths a little bit and they suck in really hard. Anything near their mouth gets sucked in. And so they're suction feeders. They don't need big teeth, but they do need the echolocation to find their prey. And uh, I think that is just one of the neatest adaptations I've ever seen.